In this video, we want to discuss a proof strategy, a strategy that you would apply to a proof before you even start, a way of thinking about a proof before you begin, work out the uh, uh, plan of action. So this strategy is called working backwards from the conclusion. It's a strategy where you look at a proof and before you even begin, you start thinking backwards from the conclusion back to the premises and you work out a plan of action. So Mark, do you want to demonstrate yes. working backwards from the conclusion with this one? Let, let's start by just seeing how you work forwards. I think this would be an easy problem to do. Just, you can do this in your head. I won't even have to write it down. How can you get from these premises to that conclusion? Do you see that if you could, you could take line one and add a B? And then you do a modus ponens, it'll be done. That's pretty much how you've been doing stuff for the most part. You look at the premises, grapple around, look for things to do, and work your way to the conclusion. However, as Paul says, there's another way of doing it. It's not better, it's not worse, but sometimes it gives you another option if you get stuck. We're looking for an S. We know we want to find S. So I look at the premises. I only see one S. It's right there. I ask myself, what rule would I like to use on line two to get the S all by itself? I'm going to say modus ponens. If I could do modus ponens on line two, I am done. And then I can get on and do whatever else I want to do. Boy, would I like to do modus ponens. What do I need in order to do modus ponens? Well, I would need A wedge B. If I could get A wedge B, I could do modus ponens, I'm home free. Boy, would I like to get A wedge B. I yearn for an A wedge B. I pine. I yen for an A wedge B. But I don't have it. All I have is a lonely A. What do I need to do to get A wedge B? Ah, I can add something to this. I can add a B to this. But now I know exactly what to do. First, I add the B to line one. And I've already figured out what I'm going to do next. Do the modus ponens. One, two, three. And we get the conclusion. Now, this problem is really simple. You'd have been able to do this working from the premises to the conclusion or working backwards from the conclusion to the premises. But the idea is, is if you know what you want and you can see where to get it in there, you can ask yourself, what do I need in order to get that? And then what do I need in order to do that thing? And then what do I need in order to do that thing? And you'll kind of walk your way back to the stuff you already have. And you'll have an entire game plan set out in your head. And you'll get pretty good at it. It's, it's, it's amazing how fast you can get good at thinking about these things. Let's have Paul do uh, another example of the same thing, with perhaps a little more robust of a problem. Paul, oh, want to do that? Well, Mark already explained it so well that I don't know if I can do it, say much more. But you want me to do? I mean, do well, you? I'll discuss the strategy I would use on this. Just thinking about it before I even start. Okay. okay? Working backwards from the conclusion, I'm going to look at the conclusion, as Mark said, I'm going to look at the conclusion and ask, how do I infer that from the premises? In other words, how do I bring it down using the rules of inference? Well, the first step is to look for the conclusion in the premises. Well, I have an N, and the, the conclusion's an N. That's what I want to have at the bottom. I see the N right there. So now my, my I'm drawn to this particular for formula within this bigger formula. I ask myself, how can I get that in out of there and down on the bottom line all by itself? Well, hmm, the N is part of a B wedge in formula. So if I could get the B wedge in formula down all by itself on a line, thank you, then I've got a not B up here, which looks suspiciously like it's got something to do with the B wedge in. And in fact, it, it does because of disjunctive syllogism. So if I could bring the B wedge in down on a line all by itself, the not B would in effect knock that in off or bring it down and I'd have my conclusion. So that's good. So now I think, hmm, I want to get that B wedge in down by itself. How can I do that? Well, it's the consequent of a conditional. And so that suggests what rule? Modus ponens. Modus ponens. I've got a P horseshoe a Q. I want to bring the Q down. And modus ponens says, well, you can infer the Q if you have a line that's the P part of the P horseshoe Q. So I really need to, inf now I think to myself, if I could get a line that's the P part alone of the P horseshoe Q, then I could bring down the Q part. That's how I'm thinking. So how can I get just the P part? The not B and H, all by itself. How could I? How could I infer something that's that's this part? 
Um, what do I see up there? Oh, thank you. I see a not B and an H, which matches the not B and the H. And so I'm thinking, how can I bring these two and make them look like this? Well, what would it, what would do it, Mark? Conjunction's doing it. Conjunction. In other words, I can bring this down and bring this down and join them with an ampersand. So conjunction just lets you take two lines and put them together with an ampersand in the middle. And that's what Mark just did. Now that, let me get my red here. Now that formula there that we formed from one and two matches the antecedent of this conditional. And so that's going to allow me to infer the consequent of the conditional by modus ponens, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to get that down by itself. Is that another language or that's M? <laughs> Pretty much, that is an M. So now we've got the B wedge N and we thought to ourselves if we could get that, we could get the N by doing, we decided the disjunctive syllogism pattern. So we see that this is the negation of this, lets us bring, the, it bring down the end. So that's working backwards from the conclusion. This is how people strategize in the middle of games of strategy such as chess. They think, I want to get to this point, what steps can I take to get there? And they think backwards to the steps they'll need to get to the end point, and then they execute the plan. So Ideally without hanging a queen. Without, yeah. <laughs> but, Something like Something that. Like that. <laughs> so good luck with okay. proofs. Okay.